You are about to enter the Peter Schiff Show. All right, everybody, welcome back to the Peter Schiff Show. Tom Woods in for Peter. Got some calls here, so let's go to the phones and talk first to John in Red Bank, New Jersey. John, welcome to the Peter Schiff Show. Good morning, Tom. Um, You're talking to a newbie um, in terms of this, the dynamics of the Federal Reserve and the Treasury and manipulation of markets and interest rates and money supply. So I've been trying to wrap my head around this for the last several months. And I recently read Lou Rockwell's address to the Mises Circle in late January in San Francisco. And the whole Austrian explanation of business cycles, even to this lay person, seems to make so much sense. It seems to be so logical. And it's got me wondering, are the Keynesians so entrenched in their ideology that they're ignorant to the to the truth, or, and this may sound a little conspiratorial, could they be doing this on purpose in the sense or for the purpose to concentrate wealth and that with each point of the cycle where it's a bust, there is a transfer of wealth from certain asset classes to others? Am I going too far with that? Um, okay, thanks, John, for that call. Uh, this is the sort of... Uh, um... This, this is the type of question I, I do get a lot because people are wondering, given precisely, as you say, just how persuasive the Austrian view is, how, what is the reason other than just sheer willful ignorance, you know, like th- that you wouldn't adopt it? it it's, it's, it's just, it seems airtight. It seems to account for the world as we see it. Why are people not accepting it? Is it, is it a matter of, of stupidity? Is it obstinance? Is it that their preconceptions are so entrenched and embedded in their minds that they can't think outside those preconceptions? Or is it, uh, is it in fact, that they believe they can manipulate the economy in their own favor? I'm sort of skeptical about this last claim simply because there have been so many people whose fortunes have been completely dissipated by these crises. And also because it is, there is no way to predict ex- the exact way that the bust will occur that where will the worst losses be what sector that's not uh, that's not obvious not easy to know what, what will the timing be that's not obvious and sometimes there are people i i think good-hearted people in more, let's say some of the more conspiracy oriented um areas of the movement and i i don't deny there are conspiracies i mean how else would you describe how a small minority in 1917 took over uh russia you know, like what? What else was that other than obviously a conspiracy? So I don't, dis- I don't dispute there are conspiracies, but sometimes the, the conspiracy though is thought of as being so all pervasive and airtight that it's even smarter than the free market economy. But the free market economy, the the whole argument against central planning is that it can't be anticipated how the economy will react because the economy is a multiplicity of human decisions. There's no way one person can forecast everything that's going to happen or plan it. It's precisely because it's it's so difficult and it is so so variegated that you can't think of it in terms of it's one thing and it acts in this particular way and we can always predict. We can predict in a qualitative sense. We can say this economy is being ginned up by the Federal Reserve and there's going to be a bust. That's what Mises said in 1928. He said the bust must come sooner or later. He did not say the bust will come on March 12th, 1931, and it's going to hit this asset class rather than that one, and relatively speaking, this will be the safer place. There's no way to know that, basically. And moreover, the elites who are running things don't, frankly, they don't want to be made to look bad. And crises like this make them look bad. And anything that might make people less trusting of them in the future is something they want to avoid. And I I think in addition to that, this whole movement now of interest in the Federal Reserve, where people are reading books on the Federal Reserve, they're critical of the Federal Reserve, they don't take its words at face value any longer, this has all come about as a result of the most recent economic downturn, coupled with Ron Paul's efforts to publicize what the Fed has been up to. So that that downturn led to this most unwelcome development from the Fed's point of view that now they're under a microscope. They've never been under a microscope before to the point where now the Federal Reserve has hired a PR firm and Ben Bernanke is going around doing interviews on 60 Minutes or press conferences. The Fed never had to do this before. 
So they are concerned about how they're being made to look. So I that's why I'm I'm by and large not uh, not convinced. There's just too many fortunes wiped out by this. Too hard to predict. But it, so why do people not accept it? There are a lot of preconceptions that you would hold as a Keynesian that would make it hard for you to see this. The Austrian view is based on the idea that the economy is not, investment is not just a big blob. Investment, one big, and you can call it the letter I, or, or capital is one big blob and we can just designate it by the letter K. The The idea of, that the Austrians have is that the economy is an intricate, interlocking system of stages of production. And when you interfere with interest rates, you interfere with entrepreneurs' calculation of which of these stages should I expand and which should I contract and which ones should I invest in and which goods should I buy. Th- these decisions are distorted by the interest rate changes. But these are the sorts of decisions that are – well, this aspect of thinking about the economy is more or less excluded from Keynes, who even came out and noted in a 1937 article that he really didn't have a theory of capital. But the theory of capital is exactly the the foundation stone of the whole Austrian way of thinking. So without that, you can't even see the problem. So there are some birds that can't see anything unless they're moving. So likewise, the Keynesians can't see the 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 phony Austrian boom. You know that where a lot of the prosperity is not real. They can't see it because their deeply embedded preconceptions make it impossible for them to see it. And finally, there are people who just are of the belief that. Uh, they they can't get out of the idea that we need to have PhDs in charge of society. You know, we need to have experts so-called running things. This has been an idea that technocrats have had since at least the Enlightenment. You know, the the people are too stupid, and we can't leave society to run its own affairs. There, but there there was a strain of the Enlightenment that thought in terms of we need a an enlightened despot to go ahead and make decisions, and now we start seeing that expanded into the money supply and all these different areas, and that's what we really have to fight against. Okay, we are coming up on another break, but we've got more calls here on the line. You are about to enter the Peter Schiff Show. First up is Corey calling from Riley, North Carolina. Hey, Corey. Hello? Yes, you're on the air. Um, hi there. Um, I have uh, a comment, and I also have a question. They're sort of unrelated. Um, I've heard you say in the past that um, you don't uh, think that they're the the owners or the the rulers of this country that they're doing it intentionally that they're just incompetent. Um, and I would actually like to challenge you on that, not necessarily in sort of a debate, but um, to really do your research. And I have a feeling that, you know, some figures like yourself, like Ron Paul, they may not want to come out and say that there is a huge conspiracy going on because it would, you know, take away from their credibility, and I understand that. Um, I think that you guys are typically truth seekers in your own way. And yeah. Well, I think the reason it takes away from your credibility is because <laughs> you, you, there's no credible evidence that there is a giant conspiracy to destroy the country, uh, and so that's why I think I think it takes away from your credibility because I think it's the the claims are just, uh, you know, too outrageous. And I, I don't. I don't think our leaders are smart enough to intentionally destroy the country. You know, they're doing it by accident because of their incompetence. But and and they are pursuing their own self interest. There's no doubt about that. Right. I think when you when you say leaders, I think you're 100 percent accurate because the people that we say are our leaders are those in Congress and the, in the Senate and you know the president. But I guess the conspiracy theorists would say that they're technically our leaders, but they're not actually uh, necessarily pulling the strings. They they could be more courageous and they could fight this conspiracy, but I think it's um, factually incorrect to. Assume that there's nobody behind. The well, who who do you think is pulling the string? Who's pulling the strings? Who is trying to destroy America and and, and using our leaders as, as as puppets? Well, I mean, there's plenty of evidence, um, and it's actually becoming more and more accepted as a you know verifiable fact. If you look at the Bilderberg Group and the Trilateral Commission, the Council on Foreign Relations, I mean, these people are meeting, and it's not. Well, just, I don't think you know, any of this is. I, mean, I don't is, think any of this is a fact. I think it's all 
uh, speculation. People are grasping at straws. I mean, you know, the, 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 if there really was this conspiracy, it, it would be impossible uh, to keep all the conspirators quiet. You know, I mean, pe- prominent people would be able to come out. There would be hard evidence. This is all, uh, you know, as I said, people pe- people like a good conspiracy story. They, they 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 like to think there's somebody out there that is deliberately undermining the economy. And and, and uh, you know, but the evidence doesn't show that at all. At all. But and and they are pursuing their own self interest. There's no doubt about that. 